I got pretty disturbed the other day when I was reading this article titled Electronics Recycling Innovator is Going to Prison for Trying to Extend Computers' Lives. He was charged with criminal copyright infringement. Microsoft Corporation was involved in the case. With Linux you can extend the life of your old computer and save some money without jeopardizing your freedom. But what do we mean when we say old computer? For example, the famous microcomputer Raspberry Pi 2 has only 900 MHz processor and 1 GB of RAM. And it runs Linux pretty smoothly thanks to Raspbian distribution, which is a modification of Debian system. Debian itself specifies the minimum hardware requirements for a desktop computer as processor a Pentium 4 1 GHz RAM 256 MB, hard drive 10 GB. So if your computer meets these requirements, you can install the latest Linux system. Of course, such a computer won't be as fast as a more modern one with an 8-core processor and 32 gigs of RAM, but it will still do the job. For instance, you could use the additional machine as a home file server or a media center. In order to enjoy your Linux system on slow devices, you need to make several important decisions about which software to install. I divided those decisions into four groups. Choose the right distribution. There are more than 300 Linux distros. Some are general purpose systems, while others are very specific to certain users' needs. With your slow computer, you can pursue two different strategies. The first is to use a general purpose system and tune it up so that it would run smoothly. This option is for users who already have some experience with Linux. If you're a beginner, then the second option is for you, to use a distro that is specialized in running on slow machines. For example, Linux Mint, Mate Edition, or NTX. I would recommend going with the first option if you're not a beginner, since it provides a lot of advantages. The distribution of choice in that case are Debian and Arch Linux. Note that Arch Linux will require much more tuning up than Debian. Now when you chose your distro, you need to choose the right architecture for it. If your old computer can run both 32 and 64-bit systems and you have less than 4 GB of RAM, I would recommend to choose 32-bit version since it will run faster on slow machines because it uses less resources. Note that with 32-bit systems, there may be a limitation for the maximum file size that your system can handle. If you chose to tune up the system yourself, the next decision will be about a desktop environment. First, you have to decide if you need a desktop environment at all. Don't forget that Linux doesn't really need a graphical environment in order to run. All the interactions with the user can be done through the terminal. Your computer can run even faster without a graphical environment. For example, if you want to run a home server, you probably won't need any graphical environment since all the requests will be remote. The command line is a very powerful tool. I heard that some experienced hackers can even connect to the matrix code through the terminal. If you want to use a desktop environment, keep in mind that some of them look fancy but require a lot of computer resources, while the others don't have many visual effects but run faster. Some try to maintain the balance between them. I sorted the most popular desktop environments from those that use less computer resources to those that use more. So here you can see that on average KDE Plasma is one of the most resource-consuming environments, while LXDE uses the least. I installed the top three choices in my Debian system on an old slow 32-bit laptop and measured the amount of RAM that they used right after the system started, without running any additional software. Mate 174 megabytes, XFCE 144 megabytes, LXDE in normal mode 119 megabytes, LXDE with open box 87 megabytes. It's amazing how little RAM open box is using. The entire operating system is loaded using only 87 megabytes. You can see that the interface in open box is extremely minimalistic. There is literally nothing on the desktop. You can click on it with your right mouse button to access the main menu and applications. Alt and Tab key can help you with switching between opened apps. Also, there's one desktop environment that I didn't tell you about, but it's worth mentioning. It's LXQT project. It started in 2013 because LXDE maintainer Hong Zheng Yi got dissatisfied with the GTK Plus version 3 library. As you can expect from the name, LXQT desktop environment is based on QT framework. It's a very interesting project because Qt can provide a very nice looking user interface. 
You know what I'm talking about if you have ever seen Plasma 5 interface. But the authors of the LXQT project set their goal to create a fast and lightweight desktop environment, which means that the main shortcoming of KDE will be eliminated. Unfortunately, it's still in the early stage of development, but I'm absolutely sure that it has huge potential. I will definitely continue to keep an eye out on that project. An operating system itself plays an important role in overall performance of your computer, but the applications that you choose for your everyday tasks are also important. If you feel comfortable working in the terminal, you should always prefer terminal-based apps because most of them are fast enough to run on old computers. But how about programs with graphical interface? Let's do a quick review of lightweight and fast GUI-based apps in the most common categories. Office programs, Abbey Word and Numeric. I chose two lightweight office programs that don't have as many features as Writer and Calc from LibreOffice suit, but definitely do the job. You can use AbbeyWord as a word processor. AbbeyWord supports both basic word processing features such as lists, indents and character formats, and more sophisticated features including tables, styles, page headers, templates, page columns, spell and grammar checking. Numeric is a spreadsheet editor. It has the ability to import and export data in many file formats and perform typical manipulations of cells. Numeric's calculations are so accurate that you can use it for statistical analysis and other scientific tasks. File Managers PCMan FM and Thunar PCMan FM is the default file manager from LXDE, and Thunar is the default one in XFCE. In Thunar, you can create folder bookmarks in the left panel and create custom command line actions. It has essential settings for thumbnails, date format, double or single click behavior, and for icons and tabs. Image Viewer Geeky or Ristretto Geeky is an amazing image viewer that has surprisingly many features considering its small size. It's my favorite program to view and manage pictures. One of Geeky's biggest advantages is the image loading speed. Even if the photo is several megabytes, it will load quicker, especially if you scroll through the images sequentially. Geeky has a feature of preloading the next image even before you click next button or roll the mouse wheel. You can customize your key bindings and view photos metadata easily. I strongly recommend this app. Ristretto is the default picture viewer from XFCE. It's also very fast. Internet browser. Unfortunately, internet browsers nowadays consume a lot of computer resources and it's not so easy to find one that would run smoothly on a slow computer. One of the biggest disappointments in that regard is Mozilla Firefox. I tested it on several old computers and noted sluggishness on many popular websites. Chromium showed better results, but I can't say that it's as fast as I would want it to be to browse comfortably. There's a very interesting browser named Midori. It started as part of XFC desktop environment and it shows great performance results even on old computers, but unfortunately the project seems to be abandoned and no longer maintained. You still can download and use it, but keep in mind that some of the websites that require the newest features will not work properly. Also, there is an interesting browser named Epiphany or GNOME Web. It is a part of GNOME desktop environment, but you can install it on any environment. Also, I want to tell you about a great new browser for experienced users called Qt Browser. It was created three years ago by Florian Bruin. In 2016, he received a CH Open Source Award for Qt Browser. What's so remarkable about it? Well, there are several things. First, Qt Browser is highly customizable. It has minimalistic graphical interface, but the number of key bindings is really impressive, and you can modify any of them. Qt Browser supports sequential key combinations, so if you use Vim Text Editor, you will adapt in no time. For example, to view the source code of the page, you can press G and then F. No need to hold one key while pressing another, and by using the keyboard, the browsing becomes much quicker. Also, the rendering speed and responsiveness are very good. Qt Browser is written in Python, so if you know the language, you can hack your browser and make it even more personalized. Email Client Clause Mail In the Email Client category, I recommend you take a look at Clause Mail. It's pretty snappy. Also, it supports search and filtering, import-export from standard formats, templates, pre-folder preferences, customizable toolbars, themes, and plugins. And I especially like the plugin that offers Python scripting access. 
Python code can be entered interactively into an embedded Python console or stored in scripts. These scripts are then available via the menu. You can assign keyboard shortcuts to them just like it is done with other menu items. Music player, Audacious. There are many audio players that can save your system resources. I chose Audacious because of its quality, stability, and usability. I like its fancy spectrum analyzer. Audacious supports multiple playlists and shuffle playback. You can customize what info about the songs you want to see in the columns. Video player, M player, MPV, SM player. Without this shadow of a doubt, the champion within the video players group is M player. It's just unbelievable how smoothly it can play HD quality videos on slow machines where ordinary players sometimes can't even start. This player is a must have on old computers. No wonder that the rest of the players I chose in this group are based on mPlayer. They are a bit slower, but provide better user interface. Note that mPlayer and MPV are terminal-based applications. I made an exception for this group since video rendering is about graphics. If you want a 100% GUI-based player, then smPlayer is the best choice. Now about torrents. Transmission proved to be a quick, reliable, and easy-to-use torrent client. GUI version is fast, but you can also use a command line version, which runs even quicker. Text editor. Leaf pad and mouse pad. It's funny how some modern text editors consume more than 100 megabytes of RAM, barely having any features. In contrast to those, leaf pad is very lightweight. Mouse pad also surprised me with the number of features, especially for editing code. You can search and replace, increase and decrease indent, show line numbers, set the tab size, highlight the current line. And lo and behold, this tiny program even has code highlighting for all major programming languages, scripts and markup languages, PDF viewer, XPDF, and events. If you have some sluggishness viewing PDFs on your old machine, try XPDF. Its interface is a bit archaic and scary, but it allows for faster scrolling. For more powerful machines, events would be a great viewer. You can rotate pages, create annotations and bookmarks, invert colors to read at night, and search through the text. For those who use a touchpad, events supports touchpad gestures. Code Editor Genie I used Genie for more than a year, and I can assure you that it's one of the fastest GUI-based code editors. I strongly recommend giving it a try. I'm going to make a separate video review of this program. I hope this video will help you resuscitate your old machine. If you know a good app that runs smoothly on old slow computers, please share in the comments. See you later.